On today's episode, newly launched system integrator Starforge Systems. Let's take a look and see just how out of this world these PCs are. All that and more on this episode of System Integrators Weekly. Let's go, nerds! Hello everyone, I'm Brea Thorne. Welcome to System Integrators Weekly, where we are gonna be hitting the road soon. Head over to Seattle for PAX West. And uh, we're very, very much behind on uh, other projects. Mm. Mm. We'll talk about that later. And as a matter of fact, I'd like any any brands who, who uh, have sent me anything that I'm gonna be making any content for, please stick around for or skip to the end of the video so that I can address uh, some of those things because um, it's been a crazy couple of months and I'd like to talk about that. And the next couple of months aren't gonna get any less crazy. The main event of this of today's video is that we're gonna be talking about Starforge Systems, the recently launched system integrator, which is publicly or publicized as being created by uh, a couple of very, very popular streamers, and as a matter of fact, is backed by several streamers and content creators, uh, a solid group of them, OTK and, and, and Moist Critical and um, you know, Ms. Kiff, of course. I didn't really watch any videos on uh, Starforge systems. I didn't really want to, I, I did take a look at them once on stream, and I didn't really give them a fair shake, honestly. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. But before we get to that, this video is sponsored by VIP CDK Deals. CDK Deals is an online marketplace that offers game keys for several different platforms and genuine software licenses at drastically reduced prices. You can even use code BRAID25 to get an additional 30% off. Here's how it works. Here we have an OEM license for Windows 10 Pro. Of course, all Windows 10 Home and Pro keys can be later upgraded to Windows 11 at no charge. Keep in mind that you'll need a new key if you build a new system or make major hardware changes. OEM keys cannot be used to upgrade from Windows 10 Home to Pro, so make sure you know which version you have installed. Here in the cart, you can use code BRAID25 to get an additional 30% off. So an OEM copy of Windows 10 Pro will drop from $22.72 to just $15.90. After your purchase is complete, click View Keys slash Codes. Click Get the Key and copy it. Then go to your Windows search bar, type out Activate, and click Activation Settings. My Windows install is already activated, so I'll be replacing it, but yours should just say Activate Windows. Paste in the key, click Activate, and you're done. Thank you, CDK Deals, for continuing to support the channel. A couple disclaimers really quick. This video is being recorded for August 22nd, 2022. Any pricing and availability that you see here may change, and some of these things change very quickly. Um, if, you find, if you see something that you really like and it's gone by the time you go looking, I can help you out anyway. Just come to my stream. I stream every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Brayathorn. And uh, I help people one-on-one. -on -one. That's my whole, my whole stream is I help people one-on-one. -on -one. You get in the queue, you get in line, and uh, you tell me what your budget, what your needs are, what you're going to use a PC for, different things like that. And I help you find something that is perfect for you. The other thing is you're gonna hear opinions. That's just what happens, uh, especially with things like this that are very, you know, they can be polarizing. So if you disagree, that's totally fine. And I'd like you to do so. Uh, let me know politely in the comments below. In fact, if I miss something, which can totally happen, I want you to let me know in the comments below. And if there's nothing else to say, just, I don't know, drop an emoji in down there and let me know and just give me a thumbs up or whatever. The last one, of course, is whenever you buy anything, not just PCs, anything you buy, you're buying at your own risk. This is not financial advice. Uh, I'm giving my opinion on this stuff. I can make recommendations. This is not me telling you to buy these things or to not buy these things. You, um, your wallet is your own. Now, looking immediately at the, uh, at, at some of the, <laughs> At some of the thumbnails and titles, which of course is is called your packaging for a video. That's like one of the most important things about a video, right? Like you guys see my thumbnails, it's my face and a PC. And and, and it's it's so that it, it, people who are interested in, in PCs are drawn to that. And uh, of course the human eye is kind of drawn to human faces and that gets attention. And there's a whole thing behind it. And of course, looking at these, you're seeing a lot of the same, right? You see people, you see PCs. And you see big red text and big blue text and big, you know, contrasting text. A total ripoff? Uh, is it a ripoff? Uh, this one looks positive. Star Forge System Pre OPCs are actually good value now. Uh, the drama surrounding Star Forge Systems, a, ra a ramble with penguin. Oh, cool. He got to talk to 
let's see, OTK and Moist Critical make an oopsie. Okay, so the, the problem with when you have someone, you know, any kind of celebrities attached to a company is, is that generally people are gonna act like they are responsible for everything. That's not the case. That isn't the case here. I mean, that's just, you see them in every thumbnail. Instead of watching other people's videos, let's take a look at it for ourselves. Taking a look immediately, you can tell that there, there was, it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty basic site. Um, it, it's, it's nice, everything loads quickly, and that's what's important. The site is, is whatever, but it is important to remember that this is your sales floor. This is your sales, main sales person. Whoever, whatever sales people or customer service people you have, the site supersedes every one of them. And uh, just for those who are new here, I, as far as I know, am pretty much the only uh, content creator who specifically focuses on system integrators, companies that um, take, you know, something that are like off the shelf components, integrate them into a system and sell it to you. But that's, that's what I do. Um, that's where I've come from. During the shortages, system integrators were the number one way to get PCs that were, uh, that, that had GPUs and ones that you could eventually repair or upgrade on your own. As to whether it's better to build a PC yourself or not, there are various angles you could talk about there. You know, you can build it yourself and you are your warranty. Some people would rather have a warranty. Besides which, remember this, pre-built PCs are probably the best gateway into eventually modding and building and repairing PCs. So let's take a look at these PCs. So we have um, uh, PCs that are out of this world. Here we go. Uh, Starforge Horizon PC, the Horizon Pro, the Horizon Elite, and the Horizon Creator Edition PC. The Horizon PC, of course, is your, your, your starter PC. That's your budget one. The Horizon Pro PC is your sort of mid-tier, and then you have an upper mid-tier in the Horizon Elite PC. And I'm starting to wonder why I'm seeing at 2,300 bucks, like this is some of the stuff that I would change here. At $2,300, you can go with a, you, that, that's getting to a point where you can get into a, you know, a, sort of a more mainstream brand of case, your Corsair, your Fantex, you know, your Be Quiet, your Lee and Lee, something like a Landcool 3, which just came out, which would have been great to start this off with. I mean, it, it's, it's, you're a new system integrator, that's a new case. I'd love to see that at this price point here. My main thing was I wanted to go through each PC and sort of look at the components chosen and make some suggestions, all right? Let's start with the base horizon. So they did upgrade this PC. This PC has gotten a solid upgrade actually since I first looked at it. Uh, before it had a 10100F, I believe. So an i3 10100F, so it's two generations back. It was two generations back. Now they have it on the 11400F, but why 11th gen? What they, the way that they, they describe this PC is designed to offer gamers a budget-friendly system that doesn't sacrifice component quality. The system is intended for 1080p gaming. What is 120 FPS and in what game? So going by this, by this advertise, by this advertising right here, this product description, I could run Cyberpunk 2077 Ultra, 1080p, and get 120 FPS. Guys, if that's what you've been wanting to do, congratulations. Go buy this PC. You are guaranteed to get that FPS number because there's nothing here saying that that is an estimate, and those results may vary. That's a bad idea. I, 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 I mean, like that's me telling you guys that, not as a criticism but like as a heads up that's not good i'm, I'm talking to start with starforge if they ever see this i don't know that should have been 12th gen even if it was a 12 100 or 12 100 f that would likely still get better gaming performance than an 11 400 f most games even if they do use multi-threading and multi-core don't go i mean few of them use up to six cores so of quad core 12100, as again, I'm mentioning, mentioning GN, Gamers Access, because they do some of the most in-depth reviews of these things, uh, mentioned as the best budget gaming CPU on the market. This is arguably the not good generation of Intel processors. And yeah, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not too keen on this. It should be 12th gen, even if you have to go down to an i3, because you'll get great gaming performance out of that, because you're saying this is just for gaming, period. And hey, they'd be able to upgrade to a 13th gen, 
13400 or 13600K. You see? Upgrade path. 600 watt power supply is nice. They did upgrade it to an AMD RX 6600 XT and for a 1080p gaming machine, that's a great choice right there. Unless you choose ray tracing. Don't turn on ray tracing with that thing. It has it. That doesn't do it too well. You will lose a lot of frames. Guys, listen, real quick message for, for, for my viewers here. Frames per second is a result of many different variables. So I get a lot of questions saying, hey, what, will this PC give me, you know, how many FPS will I get out of this? I have no idea because you can change all of that. You could have a bunch of Chrome tabs open in the background. You could be streaming. You could set your graphics to ultra. Don't set your graphics to ultra. It makes very little difference between high settings and ultra, and it uses way more resources. And all of those things affect your frames per second. So I'm not going to tell you what FPS you're gonna get off of things unless it's something I'm literally benchmarking. Uh, so the, yeah, the storage, one, you know, half a terabyte, 500 gigs, 512. You're talking about, again, about 30 bucks retail price between a 500 gig M.2 drive and a one terabyte M.2 drive, about 30 bucks, 30, $40. And that's gotta be less from distributors. So I, I, my minimum that I recommend people is a terabyte. However, I do know that it is very inexpensive and easy to add storage. So maybe here you're just encouraging that people get under the hood and add in some storage themselves. Let's look at the next one up, which incredibly going from the baseline one to the just very next step makes you a pro. Now, uh, the Horizon adrenaline system, the Horizon Pro PC is an excellent option for gamers trying to improve their experience while balancing price and performance. This PC offers solid, again, 1080p performance and great introduction to higher resolutions. Okay, well, it's got a 3070. And the same 11400F? When it comes to gaming, your GPU is more important than your CPU. That's just science. That's your graphics processor. However, at a certain point, you reach a point of diminishing returns where your GPU is limited by the rest of the system, right? And in this case, we're talking about the processor still being that 11400F. Uh, the price here, let's see, 1349. I'm not gonna say that you could necessarily go with a 12600K here, but you could go with a 12400 and, or yeah, maybe you could go with a 12600K. Even if you have to go with a B660 motherboard, because get this, 12600K, six performance cores, four efficiency cores, right? 12600 non-K, six performance cores, zero efficiency cores. So even if you can't overclock a 12600 non, a 12600K on a B660 motherboard, you still get the benefit of the efficiency cores. But either way, the 3070 is, you, if, if someone tells me they want a 1080p gaming machine and they, you know, that 3070 is overshooting that goal, unless you're really, really trying to get super high frame rates, like in esports titles. I say this is more towards 1440p gaming. And if you're looking for competitive 1080p gaming, this is probably not the route to go. I would rather have something like a balanced system for that, where your CPU is gonna be, fast as well. Um, so they still, I mean, this is basically same processor, same motherboard. They put larger storage and a more expensive GPU on here. And that is the, and a 650 watt power supply. So the good thing here is that they're at least uh, keeping to the minimum power recommendations from NVIDIA. Um, like you can criticize this as much as you want, but they're better at choosing a power supply than main gear. Yeah, main gear. I'm still salty about that because you're still selling it. All right, and of course the same CG560 tower. Like, I'm not gonna go over the cases again. This thing is, this is my, this is my opinion. That's a butt ugly case, man. I just think it's kind of ugly. I don't like the front panel. I think it's like, well, we kind of think you want airflow, but also people like those solid front panels. No, no dude, just put mesh or put glass, like commit to having bad airflow or commit to having good airflow. This in-between stuff ain't working for me. Anyway, uh, at least I put a one terabyte drive in here. That's good, that's a great start. 
Um, you can install a couple of the gigantic games that are out there that people really love to play and an operating system and a few programs and still have some room to spare. And now let's, we're moving on up. We're moving up to the uh, Horizon Elite. We're getting Elite. Now this, this is good. I, I, I really like this configuration. I really, really like this configuration, except for the case. I mean, it's, this is, this is a Best Buy looking case, man. It's like, there's nothing special about this case. And I don't like it. So 12700 KF and a 3080. That's what you're looking at here. We don't know what kind, whether it's LHR or not. That's you, some people might care about that. We don't know whether it's 10 gig or 12 gig. That's a very important point and it makes a huge price difference. So y'all better start putting that there. 10 gig, 3080 or 12 gig, 3080, probably 10. But 12700 KF is a fantastic processor. We are looking though at $2,300, right? I would say take the F off of there. Just get the F out of there, huh? <laughs> Man, I never stop making jokes about that. Um, because, you know, at that price point, I mean, you know, 30, 40 bucks between, or even less between two processors, it's not, it's no big deal. Okay, by the way, Starforge Horizon Elite PC is an enthusiast's dream come true. The case is kind of a nightmare, but okay. Uh, high end performance without exorbitant costs. Each of these systems is powerful and capable of fluid gaming experience from 1080p to 4K. All true. I mean, the 3080 can game at 4K. Uh, this one is where you start to step into uh, AIO cooling, whereas these previous ones have um, air coolers, tower coolers, which are totally fine for these 11400Fs and would even be fine for something like a 12600K. Yeah, looking at the price, 1349. This is a really good price uh, for this system, by the way. I should have mentioned that. It is a very good price for the system for what you're getting. Uh, but I do wish this was 12th gen. Make that 12th gen, I will be super happy and I will recommend this thing all day long, all right? So we're looking at 12700KF and a Z690 motherboard, Z690P, which is the ASUS Prime Z690P, which is um, the Z690 with the some of the, basically one of the fewest number of USB ports that you can possibly get on a motherboard. Okay, so you get a one terabyte M M.2 drive there, MP34. It doesn't say whether it's gen three or gen four, so basically we have to look it up. Um, you need to start including more details. Gen 3 M.2 SSD. I would argue at this price point, it should be Gen 4, period. And uh, it does come with Wi-Fi and a 750 watt power supply. So we're sticking to the very uh, minimum recommendation from NVIDIA on the 3080. However, those recommendations were made prior to the release of 12th Gen Alder Lake. And 12th Gen Alder Lake, k -Skew processors specifically, Intel removed the time limitation on turbo boost clocks. So this thing can gobble up power more than its standard TDP, right? It can gobble up more power for as long as it wants, as long as it's capable of doing it thermally, which a 240, uh, 240 AIO is okay on a 12700K. I would prefer 360 just to overbuild, but that's me, it's overbuilding. That means that there is gonna be less overhead for that 3080 to uh, to exceed its, uh, to, to have any kind of transient power spikes. So if you do the math based on just the, the TGP of the graphics card, uh, what, I think 340 watts for the 3080, and, um, and then your processor, you just add those things together and you come out under 750, that's cool and all, but then you gotta realize that you can add 40 to 60% of the power draw from the GPU for 10 microseconds for a transient power spike and you can get a shutdown on your system. Okay, so this this one is nicely balanced. I really like it. I think that it is. it has a little bit of room to improve. Um, I, I really don't think that these were the best choices for cases. Oh, okay, let's move on to the creator edition. And I take, this name right here means something to creators, right? Even those who just want to be creators. If you've got a $3,400 budget and you wanna be a YouTuber or creator, there is definitely some expectations. Depending on what you're gonna do with graphics and you know visuals and effects and things like that, 32 gigs of RAM, whether if you're doing 4K video or even you know, 6K or 8K video editing, right? And that, that sounds crazy, right? If you're not a video editor, I know it sounds crazy, but that's very common. And you don't do something like doing having global ingest settings and using proxies. 32 gigs of RAM ain't gonna be enough. It just ain't. It's not, at least you're going 3600, that's nice. And I believe actually on this one, you went 3600 as well. 
Don't know what the cast latency is, unfortunately. This is $3,400 and it comes with a 12900K. Nice, good choice going with the K and not the KF for a creator PC. You also have a 3090 in here, an RTX 3090. So 12900K, 3090 is a knockout combo for content creation because, especially if you're gonna do 3D, uh, if you can do Blender and things like that, okay? And any, you're gonna need that VRAM. Now, if you're just doing stuff like, you know, I don't know, just video editing or just photo editing, you don't need a 3090. A 3080 would have been fine here, 3080 Ti, 3080 12, 3080 12 gig, also a good option. But the 3090, if you're gonna be doing any 3D, uh, 3D design, 3D animation, very, very good to have. Uh, team group Cardea, A44, A440. Pro Gen 4 M.2. You see here you put the generation, you put Gen 4 here, but this is a solid drive, two terabyte Gen 4 drive, and uh, this one's really fast too. MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. That's the other thing, is that it's a DDR4 for 3,400 bucks. Now at this price point, I know that everyone's used to saying that DDR5 is overpriced. Uh, it's not really anymore. I'm serious about this. It's getting to where it's getting to be more affordable, including a 64 gig kit of two sticks. 64 gigs of DDR4 or 32 gigs of DDR5. You're looking at similar pricing. Uh, so this should have been DDR5. Also, the Tomahawk Wi-Fi is not bad when it comes to USB ports. However, let's take a look at it. So 2.5 gig ethernet, you have um, you know, your type C, 20 gig type C, 20 gigabit per second type C, three 10 gigabit per second type A's, two five gigabit per second and two USB 2.0's. Now, if this is the creator edition though, it should be a motherboard that's like nine or 10. My recommendation here would have been the ASUS ROG Strix Z690F or E. Um, the F has nine USB type A ports on the back and four sockets for M.2 drives directly on the board. The Z690E ROG Strix board has 10 USB type A ports on the back. And it has, uh, and we're not, I'm not even talking about USB type C because what happens with streaming is you keep adding on USB type A devices. Of course, you have your keyboard and mouse, headset, yada, yada. Then you have an audio interface. Maybe you're gonna have a stream deck. Maybe you're gonna, it just the list goes on and it keeps growing. There are some choice parts in here. Uh, this sh for a 3090 and a 12900K, do you know how much power a 12900K can guzzle down even in just gaming where CPU is not the most critical component? So much, a ton of power. And the 3090's transient power spikes are forced to be reckoned with, at least for about 10 microseconds or so, give or take. So I politely disagree. 850 watt power supply, not nearly enough. 1000 watt power supply, better. Uh, now the O11 case, let's talk about this. We are coming to the end of this. This is the last last one. Of course, we got uh, six deep cool fans in here. They're still, man, they, they got a great deal with deep cool, I guess, because they're using a lot of deep cool stuff. Now this uh, right here, I like V1 tech a lot. I think V1 tech is awesome. Um, I, I've met V1, the, the people from V1 tech, the owner, they're super cool. Um, however, I cannot, I cannot agree with closing off some of the crucial airflow openings that you have in the O11 Dynamic. The whole point of the O11 Dynamic is that you have a glass front panel, but you have side intake. Most of the intake for this PC is going to be fed right into the fire-breathing beast that is a 3090. And that is all that this AIO is gonna get to cool the CPU with. Now, I, I, I mean, yeah, I like, I, I do like that this is an RGB panel. V1 Tech makes super cool stuff, but I just, I just can't, I can't fathom cutting off most of your airflow here. But yeah, this plus the power supply, I think are the deal breakers for me here. Otherwise, 1200K and 3090 for 33.99 is, it's good, it's just most people don't need either of those. That's why you labeled this the Creator Edition. So, make it DDR5, up the power supply, and put more fans in here. Let's, let's go ahead and call this done and get to our conclusion here. So to conclude, Starforge Systems is fine. It's fine. They're fine, they just started, things, are gonna, things can change. 
Uh, if you remember, same thing with Phoenix PCs right when they started. I was like, this right here, that right there, I'm not really a fan of this, not really a fan of that. It was the same thing. I have basically made a career out of assessing system integrators websites and configurators, which to be fair, there is zero configuration here. There is no customization here, um, but they're trying to get these systems out quickly. And I, I commend that because Moist Critical was involved with Artesian Builds before and that was rough. It was rough for me. I was also involved with them when that shut down and it was rough all around. And one of the biggest complaints with Artesian Builds was the turnaround time. Nobody was happy with it. I, I, I do expect maybe a little bit more variety between the systems, like when it comes to the appearance of it. That's part of the whole thing about like, hey, streamers and content creators are running this and you like them, so you like this. Like, you know, it's, it should be, there should be more distinction between them, including the names. It's a nitpick. In the grand scheme of things, that doesn't matter. I don't know. I'm getting some mixed signals. That's all. And I think that that stuff is going to work is going to work itself out. I mean, or at least as long as we give feedback. And I want you guys to know that and at, for, at Starforge that you guys, some of y'all actually know me. Right? They, we've talked before. And I didn't know about this, by the way, before they launched. No one reached out to me and said, hey, we're gonna start a new company. We're doing this, we're doing that. I don't know why. I'm this system integrator guy. This is what I do. I'm the pre-built dude. I, I don't give feedback in a, in a mean-spirited way or to hurt anybody, anybody's feelings or anything like that. I, I do it because it's to the benefit of consumers, but also it benefits system integrators too. I've had several system integrators come in and say, hey, what should we change on our website? And then they did it. Like, because I look at these, at every system integrator that I can as a living now. So if I can help you guys out at all, then I will put myself out there and give this input and I'm happy to do so. Guys, I'm really excited for you. Like genuinely, even though I came in with criticism, that's my job. I have to come in, I have to be consumer first. And I also choose to be consumer first. And I hope you watched the video this long, even if it was a little painful because I was making criticisms, probably ones that other people have made as well. That, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm genuinely happy for you guys. And I, I do hope everything works out for you. Uh, and if there's anything, you know, just let me know, reach out to me. There's one thing I wanted to talk about real quick, and this is, it. that's it, that's it for Starforge. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is, in two weeks, I'm flying to Seattle. I'm flying to Seattle, or less than two weeks actually, um, for PAX West. And we still don't have the second and third days out of DreamHack out. We're behind on a lot of content. Um, the, I had my reasons for the, for the DreamHack stuff that, that were out of my hands. But I, like, I did interviews with people who took their time to talk to me and I never posted them. I have products here that I was supposed to review a long time ago and I still haven't gotten them out or sent those products back. This, this right here, it was supposed to be back a couple of weeks ago. I'm just now finishing things on it. So to be clear, let me explain a little bit for those, for the companies out there who have put their faith in me and sent their things to me to review and I still haven't done it. And I'm gonna do a rundown of the things I still need to do at the end of this. Last month I got COVID and it hit me really, really hard for, I'm not in, I'm not in good shape, I'm not in good health. Um, so for over three weeks, I was not in a state to really work that much. Sitting here and doing videos like this, I could do that for a short time, but y'all heard me back then, it was bad. And when I was, that was supposed to be my time to get all those videos done so I could start prepping for PAX West. And then um, my, my editor, Mr. Cuddles, um, he took a well-deserved two weeks off right after I got better from COVID. <laughs> So I, it was like, I, I couldn't just, I mean, I've been filming, I have stuff that I have filmed and all that. And I had Onware help me out with the Alexander PCs review, but it's just felt, it, 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 I, was, I was overwhelmed after all of that. And I have fallen deeply behind on content. And for that, I can, I, I can only offer my genuine apology to the companies that have sent me things to review and to the viewers who have been expecting this content. 
we've, uh, we've got the review of, of the, uh, the system from iBuyPower, the ready system in the Height Y60, which is it's pretty fantastic. And that review appropriately will be coming out on September 1st, which is the one year anniversary of the founding of Height. How perfect is that? I have gotten some of the coolest B-roll for this system that I've ever gotten. I'm just gonna throw a little clip in here, just a couple seconds, all right, that's it. I've also got the review of the laptop sent to me by Intel that I haven't gotten out yet, and that's from Intel. They trusted me, man, and I was supposed to have that. I wanted to have that out a month and a half ago. There's um, the giveaway PC. We've got a giveaway PC coming up. It's from VRLA Tech. VRLA Tech, I'm very sorry that I haven't gotten that review out yet. Um, it, it just, the list goes on. This chair. Got this chair a while back. I still haven't done the review. That's going to be coming out. But as you can imagine, these things really pile up. And it's like, I can't decide what to do first. I end up working a little bit on each thing and it feels like I've got nothing done. And I've been at a level of stress that I've never really encountered before for reasons I've never really, it's just, this is why I was scared of success before. And I feel like I'm, I'm successful, but it's just, this is a really to a breaking point here. So I, 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 I will, get that fixed up because I've got more stuff coming in from more system integrators and that is like, and they're like emailing me, emailing me like, hey, we're ready, when do, you, when do you want us to send this out to you? We're ready, when do you want us to send this out to you? It's like, I, I, I don't wanna say no, like there's another giveaway PC that's gonna be on the way and I haven't started the first one. What I'm probably gonna do for some of these videos is I will need to buckle down and get the main meat of the content to you guys what really matters and leave the fluff out. I gotta find a better workflow and that's what I'm gonna do. So I apologize for being late on content for those I'm late on content for and to my viewers for that. You should have gotten much more content now than you've been getting. So yeah, it's getting better and I'm optimistic and things are it, like, just, just wait, it's gonna be freaking rad. And uh, yeah, PAX West is gonna be great. And then a month after that, I've got TwitchCon, like, ah, uh, so many things happening. And uh, you know, we're gonna do our best to actually get you PAX West content on the weekend of the show, when it's interesting. And the, the, the DreamHack content, it's gonna have to come, I, I want it to come out. There were some amazing interviews there. And just keep an eye out for that. Please watch it and share it when you see it. Um, that's gonna do it for this episode. Guys, thank you for watching and I uh, will see you on stream. Remember Sunday, Tuesdays and Thursdays at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm late a little bit here and there, that's okay. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Brayathorn. Come hang out, I'll help you out finding a PC, the right PC for you. And um, until then, take care. Thank you.